Today we are replacing the entire front suspension. I'm opting for an heavy duty transverse leaf spring. There you have it. However, we do need to jack up the front end of the vehicle. Upon the iVeco, you do have four jacking points. Within the cab of the iVeco, underneath the seat, there is a bottle jack. And on the rear axle, there's two jacking points where you can fit that bottle jack. At the front of the vehicle, there are two more jacking points where you can use your bottle jack. However, I am going to use them jacking points to place my curving blocks underneath. Chocking the rear wheels and making sure the handbrake is firmly on, I then moved onto the front of the vehicle where I shall be jacking up the van from underneath the bottom arm. I am using a block of wood with some pre-drilled holes within it so it matches the bolts on the underside of the bottom arm. And with that block of wood sandwiched between the arm and the jack, I can lift up the front end. Once the van was in the air, I can then move my curving blocks into place. However, sandwiched between the curving blocks and the jacking point, due to the protrusion hanging from the bottom of the jacking point, I have made a template where then protrusions that come out from the underside of the jacking point can sit within a piece of plywood. Then I can rest the van upon the curving blocks. Once the van was firmly on top of the curving blocks, I then moved further forwards and removed the bumper and the wing just for the purpose of this video. It will just enable me to use two cameras and provide a bit more light within the working area that I will be working in. I've also removed the wheel and the brakes, but we will be coming back to the brakes in a future video. I shall be removing the entire suspension from the van and the subframe. So starting at the bottom, I'm gonna work my way up in order to remove this full suspension on this side. So starting at the bottom ball joint, 27 mil nuts, undo that one. There you go, that's off. Top ball joint, 24 mil nut. Undo that, but do not totally unscrew it because if you've got ABS, you want this end of the hub to be still attached on the top arm. So I'm just gonna leave it there for now. On the shocker's over, You've got two 16mm bolts, one being a 24mm headed nut, the other one being a 21mm headed bolt. Remove both of those. about you now to get it out. Weave your socket in for your top one. Yet again, 21mm headed bolt, 24mm headed nut, M16 bolt. There you go, there's a bolt out. It is a bit tight, so you've got brake pipes up there. Really should undo the bracket. 10mm headed nut, 10mm headed bolt by the looks of it. And pull that out and throw it somewhere. Next stage, bottom bolts, 24 mil headed nut, 21 mil headed bolt, M16 bolts. Undo those. There's a nut. Okay, again, 21 mil headed bolt, 24 mil headed nut. Truck cut end, 22 mil headed nut. Move that. Go. Top arm bolts, 21 mil headed bolt and 24 mil headed nut M16 bolts. Remove the nuts from them. I'm leaving the bolts in 
both the bottom arm and the top arm for now. I'm just removing the nuts. It's hand tight now. There we go. Bottom arm. I'm not going to bang the ball joint upwards like that. I'm going to shock it out. On both sides. That's it loose now. Yep, that's loose. I could do the same on the top. Give it a good, sh good whack. Same on the other side. Making sure you don't damage your ABS wiring if you've got ABS. There you go. That's loose now. That's why I left that nut in. Also, we're taking the bottom nut off, leaving the top nut in. The whole hoop isn't going to drop on the floor and pull on your ABS wiring. There you go. That's all loose. Ah, forgot one thing. Shock. Track on end. Four joint in. There you go. Obviously, I forgot the uh, truck could end. I'm just going to rest that on the floor there. Top arm. We can remove these bolts now on both sides. And that should pull out. Right over there, so what? Where your shock absorber mounts to the bottom arm, that obviously pulls off. But there's four nuts and bolts that hold the anchor point in position 15 mil headed bolt and 15 mil headed nut. They look like to be M10 nuts. Remove all four of them. On with the last one now. There you go. Just set that to a side somewhere. Now we're in the position where we can remove the bottom arm bolts that attaches to the subframe of the axle. On both sides remove them. There you go. And in theory, and it will come out. There we have it, right over there somewhere. Exposing the transverse leaf spring. We are going to move on onto the underside, and underneath here is a boomerang plate, just like that. There's a 16 mil headed bolt here, and here both have. 17 mil headed nuts and just here get my ratchet on that one is a 22 mil headed bolt holding these plates on there we go now obviously just go careful underneath there because the nuts are tight and i'm just clouting my head with this let's go get checked out by dawn Dawn. Oh, what have you done? Hit me head with the uh, ratchet. Go and sit down. You've got one on your head up here that I'm cleaning. Yeah. But it's that one there that. It's that one that's bleeding, is it? Yeah, it's still bleeding a little bit. What, the this one? is like a bloody tram line on your head. Is it? Yeah. What was he that hit you? <laughs> that pinch. I have to it. Jesus, Mark. They are quite heavy. Are well, you not doing anything more today? Does it need stitches? No, oh. no, it does, definitely doesn't need stitches. I'll do a better job next time.
So after you removed your boomerang plates from underneath, remember boomerangs always come back and hit you, there's a second plate to undo. Six bolts, 15 mil headed bolt, 15 mil headed nut. And that one is a larger bolt on that end, 22 headed bolt, captive nut at the top. So if you undo all them bolts around this plate here, on both sides, just note I have put under each end of the tra transverse leaf spring a couple of cribbing blocks just to keep the leaf spring in place whilst I'm undoing these bolts that hold this plate in position. Now on with the last two bolts that's left in the middle, both 15mm headed bolts, 15mm headed nuts. I'm just going to hold it up with one hand and undo the bolts with the other. There we go, all coming undone. Last bolt now, and it's just a case of removing it from the under tray of the subframe. Now with that belly under tray off the subframe, I'm just going to knock out this block here, releasing the transverse leaf spring. There we have it. It's not in bad condition to be fair. Now the original owner said to me that he had replaced the rear leaf springs. This isn't an original one. This is definitely a navy due to leaf spring. So it must have been the front one he was on about. However, for it over there, not using it. Okay, the next job we're going to do is to remove the front subframe. Obviously, we need to remove the steering rack. On either side of the steering rack, there are four bolts, and all four bolts are 15 mil headed bolts, and just behind them bolts are 15 mil headed nuts. Power steering pipes, two of. Bottom one is 19 mil headed banjo bolt, and the top one is a 22 mil headed banjo bolt. Don't forget there will be copper washers behind them, so make sure you don't lose those. On top of the steering rack, the steering shaft is clamped into position using a torque bolt, which I've now removed. So it's just a case of removing all four bolts from the steering rack. There you have it. You'll enjoy removing that, I tell you now. Once the steering rack has been removed, you can come around to the side and start off at the top, remove the brake pipe bracket that's attached to the subframe. It's a 10 milli headed bolt with a 10 milli headed nut. We follow the brake pipe, the metal one, undo that, undo the large nut that's holding the flexi pipe into position. That's a 24mm headed nut. Make sure you connect it back up again so it's not going to be leaking brake fluid everywhere. And clamp off the flexi hose. At the back of the subframe is another brake pipe. Unclip that from the subframe and make sure it's tucked out of the way. Then you can move along to the mounting bolts for the subframe. The subframe is held into position onto the chassis ladder with six mounting bolts. The top bolts are torque bolts. They are size T60 and it's a 18mm headed nut on the other side of the chassis rail. Undo three of them, so just underneath them top bolts on the bottom row, they are three other bolts that's holding the subframe into position onto the chassis ladder. Now they are 16mm headed bolts with a 18mm headed nut on the other side of the chassis ladder. Undo those, but don't remove the nuts yet because you're going to have to come along with your jack. Put the jack underneath the subframe, take the weight of the subframe, then undo those lower three bolts. After you remove them three bolts, you can then lower your jack off and that should be your subframe all freed off. Did take some doing, going from side to side with the crowbar, trying to work its way loose. 
in the end it did come free managed to pull it out from underneath the van and now I can present to you the subframe upon my workbench the reason why I removed the subframe is I found a couple of cracks within the subframe unfortunately there's one just on the inner area of this arch and the same at the opposite end so my work is not done here yet luckily it is salvageable I can repair them so that'll be another job for another day however I'm going to get another plaster for my head thanks for watching I'll see you next time